Hey guys, Rob here with McDojo Life. In today's McDojo Breakdown, we're going to be discussing a martial arts instructor who likes to beat the living crap out of his students. Let's check it out and let's break it down. The guy who just got done watching in that video using his students' heads as human pinatas goes by the name of Ozer Yayala. Ironically enough, the anagram of his first name is actually zero. As in zero idea of what CTE is, zero accountability for his own actions, and zero knowledge of what would happen if he accidentally knocked one of his students out over concrete. We'll go over all of that as the breakdown keeps moving forward, but from here on out, we'll just refer to him as Coach Zero. Back to the first clip we showed, you'll notice in that video, he's actually hitting his students in the head over concrete. If you follow us on our Instagram page, we actually have posted a video of people sparring over concrete before. We stopped that video a little short because I didn't want to show the full thing because the person who got knocked out in that video clip actually died. They hit the back of their head on concrete and passed away because of a traumatic brain injury or a TBI. According to the Brain Trauma Foundation, over 2.5 million people suffer from TBIs each year, resulting in over 50,000 deaths and leaving over 80,000 people permanently disabled. 33% of people who survive traumatic brain injuries have to rely on others' help for daily activities for the rest of their life. Man, that sucks! Even past that, we've covered in another video of CTE and how that can affect you for the rest of your life. You would hope Coach Zero, before becoming a coach, would look into that information and at least know a little bit more about how to train and coach his students safely. But just in case he didn't, I went ahead and contacted him myself to give him the information. Now, I tagged him in a story post, and he responded in Turkish. His response to me was, if you misspelled it, why did you share it? He said that alluding to the fact that maybe I had tagged the wrong person. Now, because I wanted to see if we can continue the conversation in English and not Turkish, I went ahead and sent him a message letting him know that I had no clue what he just said to me. This is the part that gets really fun for me. <laughs> he let me know that I had tagged the wrong person. And at first I was like, okay, I'm man enough to say that's my bad. But then I looked into it and realized he was the person and he's just blatantly lying to me. You lie! Then after that, he admitted that it was him, but it wasn't bullshit. No, it is bullshit, Coach Zero. Why? Because you're permanently damaging your students just for the sake of some Instagram videos. You should be ashamed of yourself. That is one big pile of shit. So I continued the conversation to try to see if he was aware of how dangerous this really was and how harmful it is to his students. His response to me was, there is no real hitting here. If you understand this business, you will understand that I didn't hit real there. First off, I've been in this business for over 24 years of my life, and I have been all over in different rule sets and competitions. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this is the most atrocious nonsense I've ever seen. Second, you're not really hitting them? Okay, let's take a look at some more clips of you doing it. As the conversation continued, I went ahead and sent him multiple videos and articles about TBIs and CTE and the dangers of what he's doing to his students. I had also asked him about his shoes. He was wearing regular street shoes while he's kicking students in the head, and I was wondering why he was doing that. Rather than him taking the time to actually look at the scientific evidence of why what he is doing is absolutely horrendous for his students, he just lies to me again. His response to me was, I have a guard on my foot and I don't hit with my shoes. Why you always lying? You mean like you doing this right here? 
Oh, and by the way, if those shoes look really familiar and you might think, oh, well, maybe he only wears those in the gym or maybe they're like ring star shoes. They're not. If they look familiar, that's because they're from the first clip where he's clearly walking outside with these shoes on. But I mean, what could possibly go wrong with kicking your students in the head with shoes that you've worn outside? Besides accidentally getting a piece of glass in your shoe and then cutting your student's face or getting a piece of rock in your shoe and hurting your student or gravel and dirt and I don't know, even the occasional dog poo, but I digress. Once I called him out on the two blatant lies that he told me and admitted to lying to me about for some reason, which is really dumb, his response was quite ridiculous. His response, you guys are looking at it through the wrong eye. We are doing this for entertainment. No one is complaining. Everyone is satisfied. My athletes. Let's address that. Let's address this no one is complaining thing, which is something that people in the in the comment sections talk about often. Well, they, uh, they asked for it. They signed up for it. That's not really how this works exactly because of a lot of reasons. And someone put it the best. Someone else who's also calling this man out, which a lot of people are calling this man out for negligence. And his name is Frank Boxing Coach. Frank Boxing Coach has put out a lot of clips as well, calling out people for negligent behavior. And I really liked how he put this and worded this when calling out this instructor. He stated the following. You may ask yourself, what the hell is going on? Same for me. This video is from Coach Zero from Turkey. He posted this video saying he gained great popularity for this. In this video, one of his cult members punches him as if it makes it okay now. And by now, he means referring to the fact that this coach has put out multiple videos of him hitting other people multiple times the same way. How does it come to this? How can they be so stupid? Why not just spar and take these shots only in the most crucial moments? In my attempt to inform, I will share two cognitive biases that might explain what is happening here. Authority bias. The coach is always right. The tendency to attribute greater accuracy to the opinion of an authority figure. Conformity bias, aka if everyone jumps off a bridge, will you also jump? Tendency to take cues for proper behavior in most contexts from the actions of others rather than exercise our own independent judgment. These two cognitive biases might explain the submissive attitude of these students and help you not fall for tricks. The coach is not always right. And even if everyone does it, it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Preach! As my conversation continued with Coach Zero, he also stated the following. You are using my writing as a trump card. Yes, you're damn right I am. I am using your own words to explain why you're completely incompetent as a coach and dangerous to your students, including the two lies you told and the fact that you said you did this just for entertainment, regardless of the consequences to your students' health and their life or safety. After that, he just pretty much started writing in Turkish, and I know the reason that he continued to do that is because I started leaving screenshots on my Instagram page of his incompetence and his lies. So after that, I decided to do a little bit more research on the guy, and I find a profile on a website called Global Fighter. By the way, whenever you look at Global Fighter and you check out how this works, you write your own profile. So all the information on here you can take with a grain of salt because he himself wrote it. According to his profile on this website, it states that he's had 556 amateur fights and 10 professional fights. Now you figure, with over 556 amateur fights and 10 professional fights, that it would be extremely easy to just type in this guy's name and find any of his fights. Unfortunately, you would be wrong. I scoured the web trying to find any of this guy's fights and I could only find one fight. Now, I'm not saying he didn't have these fights. I'm just saying maybe it would be easier to find, but they just don't seem to be on the internet, maybe? He's posted twice about it. One is from one camera angle, the other is from another. But like, look, just look at the opponent. <laughs>
clearly that was an exhibition fight <laughs> because there was no winner announced. They both just got medals like participation trophies. And the guy that he fought, even with all of his crazy flailing, still managed to knock him down twice in the fight. It's that time to give this guy a rating. Normally I do the Dillman scale, but this time because he's kind of seems to be maybe fibbing a little bit about his resume and also is completely incompetent in the safety of his students, I'm going to give this guy five out of five Frank Dukes. He lied to me twice in the DMs, even though it wasn't necessary for him to lie. And then after he got caught in the lie, admitted to lying, he's negligent in his training practices, he's harming his students, he's only going to shorten their careers and or get one of them killed as stated before. Coaches like this are extremely dangerous to their students because eventually they will get a student killed. Hitting your students in the head like that over concrete when they're not even wearing headgear means that whenever they fall back and hit their head, as shown before and evidence I've proven to you, they could die. I personally am really interested in hearing what your comments are in the comment sections below. I would really love to know your opinions about this particular instructor and what your thoughts are about just teeing off on students' heads for no good reason. I always try to add one of these in at the end just so that way I can kind of know who did and who did not watch the video all the way through. When you guys leave your comment, I really would like to know what is your martial arts background and let us know how long you've been training. A quick shout out to everybody who's an actual member of the page and not just a subscriber, although I appreciate the hell out of subscribers as well, but you guys who are members actually help us continue to put out stories. I had stated previously on another video that every time that we put out a story about a pedophile in the martial arts industry, that it gets demonetized every time. And so the guys who remember, you guys help us continue to be able to put those out without worrying about, you know, just not, not being able to continue to fund this project. Also, people have asked me all the time about our documentary. We filmed a documentary at the beginning of last year, the first three months of last year. It is completely filmed. And if you are a member, if you've ever donated to McDojo Life in any way, shape, or form at all, all you have to do is go to McDojo Life DOC. There will be three little dots at the top. If you click that, even though you're not following the page quite yet, you can send a direct message to that page and show us evidence that you have provided some type of financial support to McDojo Life, and we will let you write in. It will give you behind-the-scenes footage. It'll give you updates, and you also have our trailer on there for the documentary. We're currently working on distribution for that, and you should be able to see that coming out this year. As always, I want to say thank you for the likes, comments, shares, subscriptions, and all that other crap people online tell you to do. Keep the martial arts legit.